Amen. Church, you sound beautiful this morning. Let me tell you what. It's, it's so great sitting at the front of the room, hearing everybody sing with one voice, with one heart, as we come here today to celebrate what God is doing. The gift that God is sending into the world, that God is sending new life, sending His Son, sending love incarnate to be with us. It is amazing this season that we are in. It's all about new. It's time to get your new TV, perhaps. Get your new toy. Get that newest phone. And maybe, maybe if you're really lucky, you're like those people on the car commercial and tomorrow morning you're going to walk out and there's going to be a brand new car with a shiny red bow on top. <laughs> new is what Christmas is about. Or so we think. But what is so important about newness? Why do we wait all year for one day to get all of these new things. Now, I don't wish to be the bearer of bad news, but everything that you get tomorrow morning, or if you were like some families, the gifts that you get this evening, well, next year they're no longer going to be new. Perhaps that new phone's going to have a cracked screen, that beautiful shirt's got a hole in it, your resolution on your TV's outdated, and those car payments are already diminishing the joy of that brand new red bow. <laughs> we... As humans are programmed to crave the shiniest, the newest, the fastest. And honestly, new in and of itself is not something that is bad. It's only when we crave newness for the sake of pride or novelty or selfishness that it becomes detrimental to our lives. In fact, newness is what God is about. Newness is what God desires for you and what God desires for the entire world. And so as we turn to our scripture this morning from Luke's gospel, I encourage you to hear the new work that God is doing in Jesus Christ. So I invite you to stand as you are able as we read from Luke's gospel, the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Please be seated. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pure and pleasing in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, through the days and weeks of Advent, everything has been about anticipation. We have a hard time waiting for just about anything. I mean, just think about how impatient you get at a restaurant when they tell you, sir, it's going to be 25 minutes for that table. How ridiculous. I'm ready to be seated right now. Or how about when you order that package off of Amazon and they tell you you're going to have two-day shipping and goodness, it takes three and maybe even four days to get to your house. How ridiculous. We are not used to waiting anymore. <laughs> waiting is hard to do. But sometimes, when we are able to wait, especially when we know that something big is ahead, it can make the waiting so much easier. I remember counting down the days this past summer to the vacation that Caroline and I were going to take and just how much fun it was planning the trips, planning the travel, planning all that we were going to do when we get to, got to the destination and it made the trip all the more exciting before we were even able to take the first step onto the airplane. The waiting and the anticipation, the expectation made the vacation all the more enjoyable. The same can be said about Christmas. Just think about your own homes. Think about the energy that is buzzing around as you put up the lights, put up the stockings, put up the tree, get out all your Christmas village and the decorations as you turn on the Christmas music, the day after Thanksgiving as God intended. 
And you begin going to all your Christmas gatherings and office parties and Christmas cheer is all around. And this is probably the same routine that you've had for years and years. But it doesn't feel old. It doesn't feel stale. It doesn't feel monotonous. Rather, it is as exciting as, as, as is if it was happening for the very first time. If you have been in Christmas in church every Christmas for your entire life, or if you've come to church sporadically, you are likely familiar with the story of Jesus' birth. And you may be thinking, Levi, there's nothing new about this story, nothing fresh about Jesus coming into the world. And on some level, you might be correct. This story is not breaking news. The recounting of Jesus' birth has been told for thousands of years. But just like the fresh energy that comes with each new Christmas season, the age of this story does not diminish its great effect on the world. In the birth of Jesus Christ, God is doing something eternally new. God is putting into motion the plan for every person on earth to have the opportunity to receive a fresh start, a new purpose, and most importantly, a new life. The first people to experience the new life, the new world that would be encountered when Jesus came was, of course, Joseph and Mary. At the most literal sense, everything that is happening to them because of Jesus is new. When Jesus is born, nothing in their lives will ever be the same. They will have the newness of parenthood, the newness of raising their child in this strange world, the newness of coming to understand just how it is that their son is going to be the one who changes the world forever. This is the effect that God desires for Jesus to have on the lives of every person who encounters the presence of Jesus Christ. The life, the ministry, the teachings of Jesus were all about affecting something different, something new, something unexpected for those who met him and experienced his holy presence. Every person in the scriptures who encounters Jesus walks away with a story, a feeling, an experience that changes the course of their life from that point forward. But even as the work and the life of Jesus will be about doing something new for you and for the world, nothing about Jesus' birth is new. Jesus doesn't come into the world into a freshly painted nursery. Jesus is not placed into a crib that was carefully put together months in advance. When Jesus is born, he's not placed into a locally sourced, handmade, artisanal, monogrammed, sterilized onesie. No, everything that Jesus gets is the lowest that anybody could find. He's placed in a feeding trough full of half-eaten hay. He and his family cannot even have a room in the inn. There's not even room in the inn for a woman who is in labor. There's room for every traveler, but not even for Jesus and his family. And when the story says that Jesus was wrapped in bands of cloth, this is literally the scraps that they could find laying around in the barn. Just something to put together to keep their baby warm through the night. As cruel, as lowly, as Jesus' entrance into the world was, this is just the first glimpse of the sacrifice for which Jesus was willing to endure. The comforts He was going to be willing to forego so that others may receive the newness of His life that others may have the abundance that he brings. Jesus' entire mission was to bring change. Anytime a change happens in your life, in your business, in your world, there is always resistance that accompanies that change. Forces that would seek to implement, that would seek to stop the implementation of that change. Life is far easier to stick with what we know, to fall back on the habits of old, to lean on the status quo and let that dictate how we're going to live out the rest of our days. To start something new is never without sacrifice, never without resistance, never without a willingness to give something new a try. I love watching 
these shows where they take these old dilapidated houses and by the modern day mystery, they're able to take it and make it brand new in an hour or less. <laughs> it truly is miraculous. But if you've ever been someone who has taken on one of these old homes, you know that it takes far more than an hour and a couple of commercial breaks to bring that house up to date. You know that it is a laborious process. You can celebrate the blood, the sweat, the tears, the elbow grease, and the determination that it will take to ensure that that renovation, that that process is completed correctly and fully. You know that there are no shortcuts, no easy steps to, br to building that new home. It's a process of overcoming hardship and adversity. But when that house is completed, how beautiful it is. When you can step back and gaze upon this creation that you have so diligently poured your heart and your energy into. God is standing back looking at all of us. Eagerly awaiting to take your old life and to transform it into something new. God's not interested in slapping a fresh coat of paint on an old rundown house. Rather, God wants to build something new from the ground up. New creations, new possibilities, new chances, new lives. This is why we are here today. This is why the Christmas story is not some stale tale of a baby being born in a manger in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. This baby is the one who is changing the world. Who is coming to bring new and everlasting life to the creation that is groaning for rescue and redemption. The gift of Christmas is not the finest gold or the newest toy. Rather, the greatest present you can receive is to accept that invitation that Jesus Christ is extending you to have a new life. Today we come to celebrate once again that God is in the business of making all things new. The prophet Isaiah says this, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not see it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And in the book of Revelation 21st chapter says, And to the one who was seated on the throne, said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Friends, God's word is God's unconditional, guaranteed promise. When Jesus is born, God's plan for making all things new is inaugurated, and that work cannot be stopped. God will not go back on His Word. And God is utterly persistent in His will for your life and for mine. The beautiful thing is that God will never force you to leave your old life. God will never force you to accept the gift of a new and reshaped life. But there is no, there is no boundary to the length to which God will go to make sure that you hear in as many ways from as many people as you can that He loves you deeply beyond anything you can imagine and wants you specifically to be a part of His new creation. God yearns day after day for you to be restored, to be made whole, to no longer be trapped in your life of brokenness. You may have come to worship this morning to appease your family. You've come home from school and they said you got to go to church and you just didn't want to fight them. So you pulled yourself out of bed and you're here. You may be here out of habit or just out of routine. You may be here because you've been praying and eagerly awaiting this day of celebration. But whatever it is, Whatever the reason is while you are here today, the message remains the same. And many of you can attest to that message. 
You can attest to God's faithfulness in your life. You could stand up here and share your story about how your life was not what you had hoped it would be. How there was a point where you felt isolated and trapped and unloved. How you were struggling with anger or hopelessness or an absence of joy in your life. But one day, you experience the transforming power of Jesus. And by His grace, you receive the free gift of new life. And since that day, you can share how things have never been the same. And how each and every day is truly an opportunity to feel God's love anew in your home, in your heart, and in your spirit. This is the story of God's people. The story of being changed and remade in the presence of Almighty God. As Jesus meets you face to face, as you meet Jesus in the love of a friend, as you meet Jesus here in this gathering of worship today, His effect is the same. Church, it is absolutely impossible for anyone to encounter Jesus Christ and walk away unchanged. You may reject the message of Jesus. You may question the message of Jesus. You may believe the message of Jesus, but you will not leave feeling neutral towards Jesus Christ. And my prayer for every person here today is that if you have received this new life in Jesus Christ, that you will take today as an opportunity to once again give thanks and praise to God for this gift that is new each and every day. But if you have not experienced this new life promised to God, I would ask you to consider this. To ask yourself, is the old way you have been living, does that really have to be your destiny? The old sins, the old pains, the old hurts, the old memories, these do not have to be the owners of the rest of your life. You may be sitting there thinking, old is all I deserve. Old is all that there will ever be for me. It would be too hard to forgive, too difficult to believe, too frightening to take that step of faith. But I believe that the timeless message of Christmas is not stockings or trees or gifts. The timeless and always new declaration of Christmas is that your old self does not have to be your forever self. You can leave the old behind. You can embrace the new. You can move from faithless to faithful. From unforgiving to forgiving. From broken to restored. The light of the world is born into the world not to maintain the status quo, the maintenance of the old order, but to bring new life to anybody who wants to restart, who wants to be restored, who needs to have their old heart replaced with a new heart of love and peace and joy. If you desire to make this day the day to leave the old behind, and to take a step into the unknown of the new life. This is the best gift you will ever receive. It's not going to be broken a year from now. Rust will never eat it away, and technology will never outpace it. New life in Jesus Christ is a daily newness started, maintained, and guaranteed by the never-ending grace and strength of Almighty God. The God who is sent to us the God whose kingdom will never end. The God who is continually making you and me and the world new. So as Jesus brings new life, will you receive this gift? Will you put the old away and enter into the new, declaring that today will be the first day of the rest of your life? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.